Well, video time once again. Today, I'm going to be bench testing this 10 meter radio. It's an Anytone uh, 6666. All mode transceiver. It covers uh, AM, FM, upper and lower sideband, etc. And uh, the band is broken down into several subbands that uh, are 40 channels each or so. But today I'm going to do a couple of tests. I'm going to test for sensitivity. I'm going to also test, hopefully, for Cyanad today. And uh, I'm also going to do a time interval analysis to find out just how stable the radio is during transmit. And uh, today I'll use a signal generator, time interval analyzer. You now it's only drawn 290 milliamps off the power supply, and we will use the spectrum analyzer to check it for signal purity. So that till uh, get things started. First test I'm going to use, I'm going to do a, uh, a time uh, time variance graph using the uh, the interval analyzer. This will track the frequency drift over a period of three minutes. I'll be transmitting uh, a 10 watt carrier from the radio. I'm not going to you know run it at high power. Don't want it to overheat. So we can watch the power on the power meter and. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll get this going. Well, it looks like it only drifted over three minutes. Started at 28, 399, 938, and we drifted upwards a little bit around four hertz, just a little over four hertz, and then it starts coming back down again. So I would say that's pretty stable. That's very, very nice. It is a little running a little low, it's running about 70 hertz low overall, but uh, it came up in frequency ever so slightly. That's uh, not bad. And that was running uh, for a full three minutes. That's the standard uh, the default timeout timer length. It was 180 seconds and uh, it only drifted about 4 hertz. So I would say that's uh, it's a fairly stable radio. Well, here's the results of a frequency measurement taken from 10 measurements so it's running just about 70 Hertz low but during the uh, the 10 seconds that it was transmitting it only drifted uh, 373 millihertz so that's 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 pretty good as well not bad for a uh, for a little 10 meter transceiver but I've been running it on 10 watts what's up 10 watts on AM now I can go to peak reading mode and even there hello radio yeah it uh, goes up to 40 watts so that's uh, a pretty good healthy uh, forward swing there now in FM we're doing just a little under 25 watts and that's with the RF power control set about the 11 o'clock position so that's uh, that's very respectable as well. Now on sideband we're doing pretty good there too. Got a good 45 watts where the uh, <laughs> where the power control is right there. So yeah, it's not bad either. Okay, the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a carrier level on uh, 28.4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking for a second harmonic. So right now, we have about a minus 20 dBm on the, on the spectrum analyzer. And that's going through my, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, my RF sampler. And uh, at 30 watts, I get a uh, minus 20 dBm setting. So now we're going to go check the second harmonic which would be at uh, 56.8 megahertz and it's way down it's uh, showing 85 but we have to add 20 to that so it's a good six, you know, 60 dB down that is really good <laughs> for the second harmonic suppression that's, that's, that's awesome alright sensitivity measurement time so these are basically what I'm going to use out of the book. We're going to measure the uh, the Cyanad on sideband with a quarter microvolt, AM at one microvolt, and FM at one microvolt. 
to obtain these readings. So on AM, we're going to start there. We'll send a 1 microvolt signal to the receiver and see if we can obtain a uh, 10 dB uh, sign ad reading. So here we are. We are modulating a uh, 1 kilohertz tone at 30% uh, depth, 1 microvolt. And we currently have a 0 dB level. We engage the notch filter to remove the tone. And we easily exceed that. That's that's around 14 dB of uh, of sign that. That's okay. That's that's good. I can live with that. I'm sure everyone else could. Well, on sideband, I wasn't able to get the reading stated in the book. But if I use the same values that are on AM, we can uh, easily obtain the sign that level of uh, 10 dB. So. I'm not sure how they set their their test up, but uh, I wasn't able to obtain 10 dB of sign that at a quarter microvolt. I was able to obtain about half that. But uh, even then, I think just the receiver is a little noisy on sideband, so that's probably why I wasn't able to obtain that reading. But uh, this works uh, this works good enough. Okay, and on FM we are. Uh, modulating a 1 kilohertz tone at 3 kilohertz deviation. We have our 0 dB reference. So now let's uh, remove the notch, or remove the tone with the notch filter. And oh yeah, let's see, we're down a good, a good 30 dB. That uh, exceeds the uh, exceeds what is listed in the book. We should get 20, but hey, I'll take an extra 10 dB any day. And just for grins, I decided to bump the signal level down to a quarter microvolt. And we're still have about 15 dB sign in. So, uh, yeah, this thing's definitely really got a good receiver on FM. That's I think I'll uh, Get a lot of use out of this uh, out of this transceiver. It's uh, doesn't you know it works pretty good. I mean it's uh, just a you know inexpensive radio, so it does all right. You know it's not uh, you know real amateur radio quality, I guess. It's but it's good enough for just general purpose uh, communication. So I would say that so I'm, I would be happy with this radio. Okay, one final word here on power consumption and power output. On maximum, all knobs to the right. On AM, the radio will do 15 watts and uh, modulate it to 45. FM, it will do 45 watts. And sideband, it will do just under 50, uh, around 45 watts. Not quite the 60 on the box, but you know that's still pretty respectable. Now, when it comes to current consumption on FM with 45 watts, Drawing a little over seven and a half amps. See here we go to uh, AM. Draw just under four and a half. That's 15 watts. And on sideband, uh, this won't really show much, but uh, it's, it'll draw about the same amount as it does on FM, with uh, all knobs to the right, of course. But I would actually run this radio. Let's see here. Turn that on, and we'll go to run uh, AM. There's 15 watts and hello radio test one two. There you go, 40 watts. Go to uh, FM. And it's a good 45 watts there too. So, and then on, let's see here, I think I already did sideband, we'll go back to sideband. And hello, test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're doing, yet again, another good 45 watts. But uh, I would say that's probably about all you're going to need. Going from 45 to 60, if you squeezed this thing, it would just get real, real hot. So, but personally, I would only run this thing 
with the power control around the 11 to 12 o'clock position. The radio will run much cooler. You're only going to drop your output power by a little bit, but uh, the radio would last longer, and uh, you're really not going to make a, a significant increase in your received S meter reading on the other side. It's just, you know, you'd have to just double the power too much. But anyway, I hope this uh, dorky video kind of helped out. I, uh, this is my first Anytone, so yeah, I'm, overall I'm actually pleased with its performance. It uh, doesn't meet quite the specs on sideband as far as sign out. I was The best I was able to get was about 5 to 8 dB of sign out, just, just short of the 10 dB listed in the book. But once again, I think that was just more due to uh, receiver noise and stuff like that. But all the other modes they either met or exceeded to my expectations. So anyway, this will do it for now. So uh, we'll catch you guys next time.